I, I didn't. I just wanted to see if. Oh, sorry. Um, ba, 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 okay, ba, perfect. We're good. Yeah. Are you gonna leave that in? I mean, <laughs> we'll leave something in, I suppose. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll leave you to do the, the introduction. Oh, thank you. Uh, hello and welcome to the uh, shit show. Oh, the no, post-credit shit show. Yeah. Uh, I'm George. I'm Dylan. Uh, and we watch movies, we talk about them, and potentially shit on them. Yeah. Um, it has been, like, about a month since I had last did this, so I completely blanked on what I normally say there. It, it, it's been even longer since I was over, because we were... It we was, did it in, like, mid-November, I think. It was... Yeah. Maybe it, beginning of November, sometime around there, it feels like. It was some t- Yeah, it was sometime around there, and then... There was more lockdowns, and of course, because I work in retail, Christmas and whatnot. <laughs> and I did so, two episodes with uh, with Chris and Laura, and then like that was at the beginning of December, and now we're like mid to near end January. Yeah, <laughs> it's been it's been a while. <laughs> so, uh, what's on the table for us today, George? What are we watching? Uh, well, we did watch two drastic movies. Um, very different. Very different. So, like, a little bit of, like, behind the scenes, you know, three or four episodes in, we're, we're getting technical here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, the way we usually do this is, mm-hmm. like, we each pick a movie kind of thing to, to bring to the table. And I know personally that you do not like anime as much as, like, the rest of us do. I... The rest of us here at uh, True Philosopher Films, obviously. It, it's definitely my black... Well, I wouldn't say blacklisted genre. I don't mind some of the anime films. Mm-hmm. I, th- I find those are more uh, narratively and technically, uh, like, solid. Yeah. I don't watch anime, like, the series and yep. whatnot, and I don't play the games. But if you're like, hey, you want to watch a Studio Ghibli movie? Fuck yeah, I'm, I'm down for that. But if I were like, hey, let's watch all four Inuyasha movies, you'd probably be, like, no. mm, backing out slowly. <laughs> I, I did used to watch Inuyasha when I was a kid, back when it was, like, when I was probably around 12 or 13, when it was on, like, YTV late at night, because I had no idea what anime was. I was like, oh my god, this looks really, really nice. It's it's a far cry difference for animation quality <laughs> yeah. when you look at, like, Cartoon Network and, like, Billy and Mandy, and then you go to Inuyasha. I'm like, oh my god. There, there, so I didn't yeah. know what it was, but it was visually intriguing to me. Oh, maybe we'll, we will watch all four and you watch the movies. Oh, just god. so you can relive your bit of your childhood there. Because <laughs> <laughs> I've seen like two of, of the four of them. I couldn't even remember what they even begin with. But yeah, anime, definitely not my strongest. It's because I used to be an embarrassing weeb when I was a child. <laughs> and I, I, I grew out of it. I used to be one of those, like, I, w- I would have been in one of them cringe compilations. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of realized, I was like, oh, I don't like this. And, and yet, yeah, here, you know, the <laughs> me, Chris, and Laura were probably a little <laughs> more weeby, and we're just proud of that. Uh, <laughs> but I can be out with you guys in public, that's the difference. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're like a different kind of weeb for other shit. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, a weeb for horror movies and Japanese, like, samurai films. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, I mean, segueing nicely, uh, the, technically, I, I suppose, the first film we'll talk about is uh, Robot Carnival. Yeah. So, this is a very interesting one. I've heard about this movie, God, like, uh, ten plus years ago or something like that, back when, you know, reviewers were the hot big thing on the internet. That guy with the glasses, and they were, they were like, shining uh, a light on lesser known stuff. Right? Yeah. And it was, uh, I think his name was Bennett the Sage or something like that. Yeah, I remember Bennett. Uh, Anime Abandoned. And, like, he had talked about this film. uh, And if I recall correctly, he lambasted it pretty badly. Really? (laughs) Yeah, he... I mean, like, he praises like everyone else does. It it looks really good. Oh, yeah, that's that's definitely one of the selling points. But, like, everything else, he was like, fuck that shit. Uh, you know, not, 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 as crass words, but... Yeah, <laughs> to paraphrase. <laughs> to paraphrase greatly. <laughs> uh... So, like, I was always, like, wondering, like, uh, maybe I'll have to check it out sometime. And, you know, eventually I, I found it on uh, Blu-ray. And actually, recently, we, we did see that it came out on 4K. Yeah, because I, I routinely check Blu-rayswebsite.com all the time because I like to get insight. I, I like when news drops of stuff that I'm looking forward to or just new titles and whatnot. And I did remember seeing a poster for this on 4K. And I was like, oh, that's kind of neat. I, Robot Carnival, interesting title. I like the cover art. And I didn't really go into any more depth. I didn't click <laughs> on it or learn anything about it and whatnot. Um, but this was like perfect timing that it's it's either it out is now so weird. on 4K or it's coming out soon. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, uh, splen- um, splendiferous timing, I guess. <laughs> so uh, 
well, I guess we'll briefly go over the quote unquote plot of this before we go into a lot of the the behind the scenes info of Robot Carnival. Mm-hmm. Or well, we'll open with this. the The big thing is it's essentially an anthology film. Yes. Uh, it's the, there are nine animators that have worked on this, um, under the idea of them going with the title of Robot Carnival, and they were tasked with making a short piece to go with it. Yeah, they all it all um, not necessarily carnivals themselves, but it it all in some way had to feature or revolve around robots and, and like the concept and of like a carnival ish yeah. type thing. Uh, another really interesting thing, we both watched two different versions of this. Did we? I Not only did I watch an English dub of this, and you watched the Japanese dub, uh, but I watched the, uh, this is Discotech's release of it, and I believe the one that I sent you to watch was uh, released by uh, Streamline, which was a company that uh, at one point did a lot of uh, releases of anime, and they are no longer around. Oh, okay. Because I remember I watched this on YouTube. Yes. And I know this, they're different, is because the order of the shorts are different. <laughs> oh. Because when I was skimming through to make sure I was sending you, like, the proper thing, mm-hmm. and I was watching, I'm like, this doesn't seem like it's the right order. So I looked it up, and Discotech's version is the right order. For some reason, Streamline rearranged it, which baffles me. Really? Um, yeah, not that there's any, like, other than the idea and the overall structure, there's no really tying elements from one end to another one other than the book ending yeah obviously um, so you could essentially flip them around in any order and it doesn't make much of a difference but it, the intended order in which they were shown is proper on the release but it was um, yeah the discotheque one okay uh and also a nice little nugget to say is the uh the main menu is has like a remix theme of like the music in it oh really time to like footage from the movie i'm like this is really good oh. i want it on my like uh, my iPod to listen to. It was that good. <laughs> so they were kind of like, it was like Mickey Mousing in a sense. Like the music is synced to the actions on screen. Yeah. Oh, that's kind of cool. cool. I like that. Um, I'm assuming you, because we were, we were going to talk about interesting facts. I'm assuming you under, you know who composed the music. No, I actually did not write that down. Really? Ah, okay. We're off to a great start. <laughs> Joe Hisaishi, uh, okay. who is very prominent in the Studio Ghibli. He did oh. all the music for Princess Mononoke, Ponyo, Spirited Away. It's funny you mention that because some of the animators uh, would later work on some Ghibli films. I had a feeling they would. Uh, it's We'll get to some of that interesting stuff first. Yes. Or later, I should say. So the movie came out uh, in July of 1987 in Japan. Uh, it came to North America in 1991 of March. Had a limited theatrical release in Portland, Oregon at Cinema 21. A cinema that is apparently still around. Really? Uh, the grossing numbers obviously aren't going to be uh, exact because for some reason, whenever it's uh, not a North American film, the numbers don't exist. Oh, yeah. So, at least in North America, it made $11,000, which for, like, showing in one theater is not that bad. That's actually, that's impressive. It's a lot more than what I would have expected. Uh, sales obviously got better when it was released on VHS and Laserdisc uh, mm-hmm. back in the day. That would have been one of the, the driving forces of the, the revenue, I think, is from word of mouth. And you mm-hmm. have to find it on DVD or VHS now. Well, and it also became a cult classic when it started showing on uh, television. Oh, really? Yeah, late night anime uh, channels. Oh, interesting. Okay. But we'll uh, we'll dive in that in a sec- uh, later. But let's talk about the, the shorts in this. Yes. <clears throat> so, uh, both of ours would start the same, uh, hopefully. Yes, with the opening. <laughs> the, the title, Arriving into a Small Desert Village, Destroying It in the Process. I, I really liked... <laughs> Like, I like the opening that it, it, they're just like, oh, God, this this one kid sees this thing for... The poster. The poster and immediately becomes, like, visibly agitated. Like, yeah. he's... he's ter- and they're like, oh, it's a traveling poster. But it's actually the words Robot Carnival as a <laughs> giant machine. It, like, on tank of, treads and everything, just roaming along. It is the funniest fucking thing. It's, it's almost like a more nightmarish... Like a Shinya Tsukamoto version oh, yeah. of Howl's Moving Castle. Yeah, the absolutely. Words, robot Carnival are actually on the machine, and it's just looking up, and, the, and like there's a moving, ro- literal robot carnival just crawling through the <laughs> desert, and it's just demolishing everything. And like, yeah, like things like fall off it, and it starts exploding, and like 
kills people for sure. Like by the time you see like the survivors, there's not as many people left. Oh no, it's it's they're like, <laughs> hey, look at the dancers. They're firing like ballistics missiles and they're yeah. just destroying <laughs> shit everywhere. I was like, this is the greatest opening. I would love to do something similar because that is as funny as fuck. It, it's yeah, it's like, <laughs> hey, the traveling carnival's in town, and everybody that's lining up to watch them unload, they're just suddenly pull out Tommy guns and just shoot the audience. <laughs> Like, as far as, like, <laughs> anthology film openings, like, this is probably one of my favorite. <laughs> it was, yeah, it definitely catches your, your attention. I liked it. Yeah. But it was also, it was animated by the same people that did uh, Akira. Yes. Which is really cool because... Which, there's actually some funny facts about that, which we'll get into the, I, later. I think I know what you're going you're gonna to say, but... <laughs> we'll find out, I guess we'll yeah. find out. Um, so I don't know what the next... So after uh, the title, you know, scrolls off, mm-hmm. you know, into the desert... Uh, we go into our, one of our first shorts. For me, the first short was the Frankenstein one. Ah, for me, it was Starlight Angel. Yes. Frankenstein that's what I one was, I believe, the third or fourth okay. I saw. So, uh, this one, I actually really love this short. I did, too. I, I thought it would be a little bit longer. Yeah. Um, but I, it's very short and sweet. Very condensed. Yeah. One of the nice things about uh, Robot Carnival is so it makes it very weird that there is a a dub of it to begin with is there's very little dialogue in a lot of the shorts. The only ones that have dialogue that my, if I remember correctly was, um, presence and strange tales of me, J machine culture. There yeah. Might've been something in chicken man and redneck. Uh, no, but there, yeah, there was an extended one and one of the other ones. Uh, ah. but like a lot of them like are just very much, um, either, like, weird noises uh, for, like, people talking, or just, like, silent, and it's, like, you know, the music is accompanying, like, the action on screen, and I fucking loved it. Yeah. Especially with this one. Um, okay, I don't have any proper notes on this. So, like, the, what happens is, uh, this guy who's obviously supposed to be, like, a Victor Frankenstein yep. person is trying to bring a robot to life in his, like, geared tower basement. And, like, as the robot's coming to life, like, his laboratory is just falling apart. And it is, like, such a very picturesque thing to see, like, success and destruction happening all at once. And then for him to kind of, like, meet an untimely end because, like, like, him teaching the robot. Yeah, two sides of the same coin. Mm -hmm. And because the the robot's mirroring uh, mirroring his, his movements. He was, like, moving his hands and the robot was moving his hands. So despite the fact that the the robot is like he's finding finally success it's it's kind of like a pyrrhic victory where yeah. like the cost of this is mm-hmm. pretty much wasted it is frankenstein <laughs> yeah. the cost of being god i suppose or playing god yeah that that's actually uh, a good way of saying it the cost of playing god mm-hmm. uh and yeah like is is just really it's like one of those things like as a good like uh, you know, proper first short for, for this. It was like, okay, this is what I'm in for now. This is what I'm kind of expecting. And that's kind of what you get for most of it is, you know, very well f- animated pieces, yeah. which makes fucking sense. The first two, because it starts off with, like, robots coming to town and destroying everything, and then it moves into like, the the robots for the first part are definitely a force of they're almost like a force of nature where they, mm-hmm. they just come in and they, they destroy like almost like an apex predator the second one um the the dude falls victim to a robot but n- n- unintentionally by his own hand like he, yeah. he's not the robot wasn't trying to kill him it was just victim of circumstance yeah it, so it shows you like throughout the like the thing there um robots will allow people to die they will be the hand that kills the people and unintentionally and whatnot. So it's like, I wrote, I wrote a note that, um, uh, metaphorical for the cohabitation between man and machine, subconscious and internalized fears about man's reliance on technology and how it will eventually result in our destruction. Because a lot of people like the Frankenstein one, he was trying to, he spent his whole entire life. He's giving his life both, um, like metaphorically and literally Mm -hmm. to the robot and the robot is indifferent to it completely and it kills him. So it's one of those, like he spent his entire life trying to rely on this and I thought it was kind of metaphorical. Yeah. And just, I mean, like if you don't care about like a lot of the subtext of things, like it looks very nice. Yes. (laughs) So it pleases both crowds. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) This short's too smart for me. (laughs) (laughs) Don't worry, people. It's good for you, too. Um, I believe... 
yeah, so the next one for me uh, is the... I, I wrote down very North Star of or Fist of the North Star. So that was that was um, <laughs> uh, deprive. De yes, that was I the think one so. the kid running around fighting the robots and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> the, like when I say it's like Fist of the North Star, it's a hundred percent like this oh. guy. He's red hair, you know, standard protagonist looking person goes around beating the shit out of robots. You know, very action pumping music to mm. go with it, and he's trying to save like. A girl, maybe princess, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. And uh, it, it's just, it has a really nice touching moment where it you also, find out it's like, oh, it's it, the person's a robot that was like, you know, wanted to save her. Yeah, it was like the helper robot. Yeah. And the, visually, not only Fist of the North Star, but there was a, a TV series back on like YTV, it was something something of the Zodiac, and each of the characters. Oh, yes, yes. I, I'm glad you remember that. I don't remember what it was called. It was uh, like Knights of the Zodiac or yeah, something. Yeah, over like here it's that. called Knights of the Zodiac. I oh, think, is that right? Yeah. I <laughs> think the, the official title, like the, the original title, is like uh, Saint Sanya or something like that. Ah, okay. Let me see. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I know that anime so well, or at least the, the English adaptation of it, because of the opening theme was Saint Flock of Sears. Seagulls. <laughs> yeah, that's right! <laughs> <laughs> and that's oh the my God, you're anytime right. I talk about that, they're just like that. That doesn't sound right. I'm like, no, no, no. Flock of Seagulls was for an opening for an anime over here, you were and a, it's the funniest thing ever. You are a hundred percent correct because I, I, I do remember that. <laughs> it's the it's the only reason I know the Flock of Seagulls so well. <laughs> Yeah, it wasn't that, that was their one hit wonder it was because it was in front of an anime that was, that was it they could have gone better and then they went oh you're, you're yeah you're like 15 song. years later like that one song finally caught its audience <laughs> <laughs> thanks to like 30 seconds of it thanks YTV uh, <laughs> but yeah like it's it's a very like you know I don't want to say like making it sound really bad like by saying like oh yeah this, this short's very standard for what you expect out of anime but like it does like hit like a lot of those check marks, but like it looks so good. It's like, it's like very action actiony. It's the like the sound effects, like the like the mm-hmm. you got missiles flying off. You've got uh, uh, cables being pulled and whatnot. So the sound effects above the music and whatnot still sound fantastic. That's mm-hmm. a highlight, like the the, the culmination. Of, I, I like that. Yeah, and it's it's also nice. Like <clears throat> there isn't uh, another short in there. Like. For a lot of them, like, there's no, like, duplications of a lot of shorts. Like, a lot of them, like, have their own thing. Yeah. Uh, so it's, like, it's really nice, like, you know, you don't get too much of, like, the action side of things, which is really good. Yeah, there's, um, there's a few of them that are a little bit more <coughs> slow. They're not always on, like... There's one that's very slow. <laughs> presence, right? <laughs> yeah. Not my... That was probably my, my... No, I'm thinking of a different one. Oh, Cloud? Yes. <laughs> ah. Yeah, Cloud was pretty, pretty slow. Uh, so the next one I have, which is actually presence i think is what it was called so like it, it opens up with like these school kids like they they're kicking a ball and then like they steal like an old man's robot head and like kick it around yeah uh and like it's funny that the english have like a lot of it is very like english voices for like a lot of them like you know like tip top cheerio yeah um kind of thing so it was just really funny like hey give me my head back stop that <laughs> yeah. now see here i'm like, <laughs> I'm like oh well, my they, god they, they went literal like i full loved on it english <laughs> I, I, I feel like that scene was probably a callback to uh, Street Trash. I'm just making shit up. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, have you seen Street Trash? No, I haven't, so I was expecting you to elaborate. There was, there was, there was a guy in the junkyard. Um, when you drink the, the Venafly Viper or whatever, the Tenafly Viper, you start to like melt and whatnot. Well, one of the characters, one of the, one of the members of the Hobo Society gets his dick cut off. <laughs> And he's grabbing his crotch, he's trying to bleed to death, and he's chasing, and all the guys are, like, playing keep away, and they're throwing, <laughs> and if, it's just this innocuous scene, they're just like, oh, we're playing keep away with this guy's, like, detached shaft, and, and so, <laughs> somebody in Japan saw that and went, ha ha ha, very funny. <laughs> it's exactly what it was, <laughs> and that's what it says in the notes, that's what uh, Wikipedia told me. Oh, sweet. Someone named Dylan wrote that article. I don't know, <laughs> it's spelled differently. Um... Yeah, I even wrote, like, I say, <laughs> in my notes, <laughs> as he gets his head kicked. I do declare. <laughs> so, uh, Presence is about a uh, husband uh, who... It was really weird, because it started off, like, it's this husband character, uh, and he he's going on, like, a, an inner monologue about, like, how 
he has a wife who like people that he's like oh you you shouldn't have like a very like career woman for a wife and i'm like this is weirdly progressive okay and then like it just takes a huge left turn to like he's building a robot child <laughs> <laughs> this this does feel my, my my progressive always at work not at home wife won't give me a child so i'm gonna make one with a robot yeah <laughs> Uh, and then the robot's head's blo- head blows off at the <laughs> <laughs> So, like, he's working on this girl. It's, it's, uh, she's dressed really, I wrote down, like, pastel goth. Because that's what it looked like. But, it, like, it also just executed, like, a Lolita like, kind of. Yeah, Loita, very, like, 80s, yeah. like, feeling. Uh, something you'd see on, like, Saved by the Bell or. Yeah. Whatever. Like Jesse's outfit, like, a, like a purple sundress or, yeah. like, a blouse with, like, flowers or something like that. Yeah. So it's, like, Okay, and like, what else are right here? The guy's like a toy maker, and for some reason he goes to destroy the robot because like it was pestering him about like life and stuff like that, and he wasn't expecting it to have like a higher level of sentience. Yeah, you just you're just <laughs> there to keep me company in bed. I don't want to ask answer philosophical questions about <laughs> life and death and like the the frailty between them. You're 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 here to like occasionally be my pump. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> he bit off more than he could to- chew developing so like, a woman. Yeah. And so like uh he kills it and like, okay, that must be it. And like it keeps going. Yeah. To where he's like older and like he's like having like visions of her still there. Mm-hmm. And like eventually he kinda just die. Well, I guess it's implied that he dies and goes off with, you know, to heaven with it, it, Robot yeah, Girl. It's it kinda metaphorical, I yeah. think. It's a bit weird. I kind of liked it a little bit. It was it did drag a little bit. Yeah, it, it's a nice change of pace because it's it's again more philosophical than yeah. just Oh, absolutely. Oh, I got I'm a robot in disguise and I'm beating up a bunch of other robots to save this girl. It, so it's got more of a ask question, answer question kind of thing. Going it makes on. you think a little bit about yeah. like, you know, a human's relationship with like technology. I I appreciate Especially that. in the 80s. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate that. Um did you did you like that one? You kind of sounded a bit indifferent. Um, <clears throat> thinking back now, not so much. Um, I didn't mind it. It felt a little weak to me. It was oh. that one and Westerns Invasion. Westerners Invasion was probably really? my oh. weakest. Yeah, I didn't really think <laughs> that one that much. It did feel kind of like a propaganda film in a sense. It'll be, okay, we'll get to that in a sec. Actually, we might be getting... Into no 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 we're not okay what's next for you so uh, after that one the next one was uh, space carnival space carnival uh oh uh starlight yeah Angel. starlight I like that one <laughs> that was great I thought that was a really nice opener and the animation was all really nice the characters were well designed I thought the main girl. She was like, oh, super cute. Yeah. And you're like, oh, good. You're like rooting for... You're rooting for like the clumsy robot. Yeah. Who turns out to be like, you know, a guy wearing a robot costume. Park employee. Yeah. And then there's like a virtual reality thing. Where Some she... weird coaster. It's like, what the fuck is going on it, in this? It almost turns into like Evangelion <laughs> in a sense. Yeah. I'm assuming I've never seen Evangelion. They pilot giant mechs, <laughs> right? Yeah. Okay. So like... Uh, or is that our Gundam? I don't know. <laughs> Both of them, uh, well, for different reasons. So, like, uh, in Starlight uh, Angel, was it? Starlight Angel. Starlight yeah. Angel. So, like, what it is is these two girls are yes. uh, at a Disney-esque park. Yes. Uh, very future, very based around robotics and technology. Mm-hmm. It's pretty much just an entire, like, uh, Tomorrowland. Tomorrow, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, like, it opens up with them going on, like, a Space Mountain ripoff. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, like, they're wandering around and they kind of like do like a little trick on like the clumsy robot employee as they run past them and like the one girl drops something so he's trying to find her to return to all this her. while we're unaware that it's a it's a dude in a suit we yeah. think it's like an actual robot yeah uh and eventually like the girl gets like really disheartened because like her friend is like dating an ex i guess i think my interpretation <clears throat> was that was her boyfriend and she starts to like her other friend, but didn't tell her. Oh, okay. The other girl had no idea. Yeah. Because she wouldn't have been like, 
yeah, I want you to meet my boyfriend. It's your boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just figured that it was like an ex and so, or something, and she just wasn't uh, aware of it or something to that degree. Yeah, that's that that's what I felt too. I, that's there's again no words. It's all set to music. Oh yeah, yeah. So Sorry, we should probably mention this is like another very wordless one, very like music atmospheric, and it's like yeah, very nice. <laughs> yeah, that was that was my interpretation. Uh, she goes on a, a roller coaster uh, that goes from a roller coaster to some sort of weird VR experience. I don't know how, but sure. <laughs> yeah, there. I don't think there was them going to anywhere else and putting on headsets. I think it was they're weird. just on the roller coaster and then suddenly it just transports her into this out of body experience or yeah, something. Yeah, and now she's flying with like Gotron or something. Yeah, like a giant robot's there, and like the robot uh, employee comes to like save her, and like it's revealed that he's like you know not a robot and like is some guy, and like she's you know uh, weirdly offish about like being helped by a person. And not a robot? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of weird. Like, oh, thank you, robot. Oh, you're a dude. Never mind. Oh, God, you have a dick. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> Fuck off, dick. Uh, it, was, it was a really, like, fun kind of thing. Like, it, it takes, like, the action aspect uh, to a slightly different direction. A little more lighthearted. A little too. lighthearted, for sure. Yeah. And uh, has a nice little, uh, you know, uh, touching uh, aspect to it. Yeah, I liked it. Yeah. I, I liked um, Starlight Angel. It was very nice, and I would agree. It's a nice opener to something called Robot Carnival. Yeah, which is why I. Um, but that also, was yeah, the first one it, it opened for Starlight Angel with me. Uh, it was the opening, and then it went immediately to Starlight Angel. Mm -hmm. uh, where this one is like dead set in the middle. In oh, the middle. I didn't know yeah. that. <clears throat> or pretty much the middle, as far as my notes are concerned. <laughs> uh, the next one is probably one I cared the least about. Cloud. Yeah, Cloud. Yeah, I. I mean. Visually, again, visually, very nice, very cool, yeah. very. I loved it. It was like manga paneled kind of like thing, like wood paneling. Yeah, like a. It, it's almost like they they took a storyboard. Yeah, uh, and just did that. Very like simplistic feeling and everything like that. Yep. Uh, but it just kept going. There was like, I would say, a good like solid minute or so, of just you know not really much happening as far as like you know the environment behind because like. What it is is it's this boy, this robotic boy who's just walking, mm -hmm. and like the clouds behind him or like uh, in the background of him, are kind of like changing as he's moving along, which is interesting in, in itself. But there's like moments where it's just like nothing changes, and like the yeah. animation is very like simplistic, so it's not like it's uh, dazzling in any way to kind of like keep your attention in that aspect. Uh, but like once it kind of does a few things it's kind of interesting but like it's just this long uh, yeah nothing. Okay. thing that um i didn't mind it i i like the animation style i think uh visually it's it's really pretty it is again all the all the pieces in the film yeah. are very nice um but other than that there's very little meat in that gym mat <laughs> <laughs> it it overstayed its welcome in a few in a few spots i think yeah yeah uh <laughs> and that's enough about that. It had something to do with clouds? I couldn't tell you what exactly. <laughs> clouds saved the boy. <laughs> <laughs> or the boy saved the clouds. It's one or the other. Uh, so the next one is the one that you don't like so much. Uh, the West I Invasion. Oh yeah, the Westerners Invasion. Right? Uh, which I also dub Wild Wild West in Edo. <laughs> <laughs> um... Uh, I, 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 fun fact, I don't know if you know this, but Edo was, uh, originally, that was the Tokyo, if I remember correctly. Edo was, because it was the Edo period. Or the Edo period, sorry. Yeah, Edo, Edo, I think, I think it's Edo. Okay. Um, but yeah, that used to, when they were like, oh, he's traveling to Edo, that's now, it's present day Tokyo. Oh, okay. Um, and they changed it, I can't remember, it was after the Edo period. I gotta know this, um... <laughs> Edo period was, or the, the Tokugawa period is between 1603 and 1867 in the history of Japan. Um, it was under the Tokugawa shogunate and it fell in 1868 and then they named it J uh, Tokyo. There's a nice little history lesson for you folks. Yeah, I've been watching a lot of samurai movies. So. <laughs> um, I'm kind of curious as to what... Why you didn't like it too much. I kind of... I was, like, digging it for some of it. There are some iffy parts about it. But, like, for the most part, it's just, like... You know, very, like... 
ye old mech battle where it's like wood and like you know unconventional mech yeah uh, it, attire because it it, it kind of reminded me of um one of those old stage plays yeah uh i can't remember the the proper name for them um but it, it you had like the actors on stage like the the old the wood puppets okay and whatnot but instead of that it was like like caveman-esque mech battles where they're just like oh i'm gonna build a giant <laughs> thing out of sticks and stones and shit and I'm gonna <laughs> fight your giant thing out of sticks and stones and shit and I like the premise of it and I don't know something just didn't click with me like all the pieces were there but it didn't just it, it's like they were put together incorrectly for me okay. and I don't really have a better way of describing it It just it's something that just didn't mesh mm-hmm. for me maybe on I, another viewing <laughs> like what I kind of I love the cleverness of it a little bit, because I, I do enjoy my mech battles, and, like, the idea of it just being, like, you know, here's mechs that uh, can't technically run on the, on, like, you know, materials that are available to them, or technology that's available to them in this time period. Yeah. So, the idea is, like, this, uh, you know, a North American Westerner, some, someone named, I think I wrote down, Dr. Johnson Jameson. Johnson Jameson, yeah. Uh, he he's, comes in with his, you know, fancy new mech bot. To, like, try and take over Tokyo area, or the Edo area. And, uh, you know, a bunch of spunky kids decided to take him on with their festival robot that they have. Mm-hmm. And, like, they destroy the town and everything. And it's just, it's it's a little charming uh, with it. That's kind of, the, like, the best way to put it. it the, but when I, when I said earlier, it, it, I wrote, Westerners mm-hmm. Invasion propaganda <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i could see that <laughs> because it was like this was um uh you know like the westerner the only person that speaks english in that is coming by and he's he's piloting this mech and he's trying to take over and whatnot which could be seen as like you know an american uh coming in over uh, the imperial army and they're yes trying to yes take down Japan i was going to ask that if, it, if he's voiced english in it it or not yeah that's then, great yeah. I, I do like that obviously but and it's you got know. A, like actual like japanese subtitles underneath yeah they did they had it with this one too the the subtitles were there for for him uh i'm like oh so you must speak english the other one i have to double check with that yep <laughs> uh downside to it in the english dub boy is it racist <laughs> oh <laughs> <laughs> the voices for the kids is very stereotypical like it it was one that, so there's f- four Four, five kids. Uh, one, yeah, five, five, I believe. Uh, one, the one with the uh, the glasses uh, was the first one where I'm like, holy shit, that's you know, it's I don't want to even impersonate it, but it's like what you think of like as a racist caricature voice. Yeah, like the for oh, an Asian. Oh, yeah, yes. one of those very in in and then like, like properly. I was like, oh jeez, uh, no, that's lessening my enjoyment. And then like I'm listening, and the other people have it just ever so slightly in their voice. I'm like, why? I again propaganda. I, I think it's it so was, weird. It was supposed to be show like it, in my ear, like when you speak, like oh, um, you know, I don't know any like actual Japanese phrases, but like you know, um, arigato gozaimasu or something, something like thank you very much or whatever. Mm-hmm. But to like a Westerner's ear, it's arigato, like it's clearly over. Like I'm only hearing you as as like a um, like a slovenly Japanese yeah. idiot. So. It's, it was just very weird to hear hear that and, like, any other, like, I guess it's just, I don't want to even say it's part of its time period because I feel like this came out in North America, you know, early 90s and there weren't too many things that were dubbing. But the, the dialogue, it, it could have been uh, due to the dubbing team themselves, but I think... It's just very weird. It, it's <laughs> possible that could have been the intended idea that the Japanese were like they're they're showing like this is the kind of stuff that they would show to the American audiences. Maybe, like like here's how you like here's the war, boys. We're gonna go fight those wily Japanese. Go get them. It, yeah, it, like I said, it's just it's very weird though. There was one line in it. So like near the end, after like they have their fight, and they uh, they get rid of the the, the doctor. Johnson Jameson. Johnson Jameson. <laughs> it's still a fucking stupid love available name that we would probably use for something. I was gonna say like <laughs> we, should, we should probably Doctor Johnson Jameson because it's like my, this is my my the most stereotypical American name. My name is Jack Johnson. I'm running for president. My name is John Jackson. Running for president. Yeah. <laughs> and anyway, so like, uh, and like they're looking at the destruction of the town, 
And like you just see like this one, and you just see all these houses demolished, and the guy's just like, "Oh, look at all this destruction!" And pans over, and you see like the other side sounds like, "Oh, but this side's okay." Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I love that line so much. Oh, that's not too bad. <laughs> <laughs> it, it did have its, its moments, but yeah, that's exactly what I meant when I said it felt like propaganda, yeah. in a sense. Uh, so the next one, the one I actually, I think I like the most out of this, uh, I'm gonna take a guess what it probably was out of, like, what's left, I think, for like two or three sections. Uh, Chicken Man and Redneck. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I had a feeling you probably would. The, this was great, because it's like, I, I'm kind of, I'm still a little bit confused as like, what the overarching thing is, but I think I kind of get it as it's like a robot apocalypse and some guys like escaping town or like overnight, like shit happens. Yeah. It's one of those two. Cause it, again, it, that reminded me thinking about it now. I don't want to like play the, the, the pair uh, of propaganda card again, <laughs> but it almost felt like there was like a curfew going on. And now like anybody who wasn't like a robot or anything like that would have to, follow these rules or have to like leave down. so it, it felt like he was trying to like emigrate like you know, like the Von Trapp family running away yeah in a sense it, it kind of it gave me vibes of that because he was like hell bent on getting out or just like surviving yeah. it's some weird thing uh, one other before we go in the plot of this short but like the other weird thing is it opens up with like a shot of a lot of rotoscope people yeah which was weird and it goes and he's like his expressions are somewhat rotoscope but not entirely so it was very weird. <laughs> yeah, he was clearly the odd one out. Yeah. Which was, like, the the rotoscoping was really well done. But it was just, it was very out of place for, like, okay, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. It definitely, you're like, huh? It, it, it caught you off guard a little. So, I just want to make sure I don't have any notes other than that. Uh, yeah, okay, so, uh, this guy who I wrote down kind of looks like Doctor Who. Because, <laughs> like, uh, I think he would be referred to as Redneck? in this? I think so. Or maybe Chicken Man, because he is running away as a chicken. I don't remember. Which which Doctor Who? Uh, in the, the Chicken Man and Redneck one. Yeah. So but, the, the, the the human. Yeah, but which Doctor Who? Oh, because like he's wearing he's wearing like this green uh, trench coaty kind of thing and he has a scarf. Oh, from like the, his outfit. Uh, yeah. Okay, okay. And like he hops on like a little moped and like he drives out of an alleyway and he's being chased by like this a robot that's like hovering around and like bringing all these other like uh technological like pieces into robots to chase them down or to like meet in like a <coughs> bit of a meeting place or something like that. Oh, okay. And it, it was it was just like a wild short to watch because it's just a lot of things were happening and it's just like this really fun chase and I don't know if I wrote it down kind of like remind me a little bit of like Heavy Metal, Heavy Metal two thousand like you, you yeah. A lot of, like, the the robot uh, imageries that were happening very, like, uh, yeah, like, very heavy metal. Uh, 2000 Especially, was the second one, right? Yeah. Or even the first one, too. I mean, both uh, yeah. invoke the same thing. I've seen both. Thing, but, like, that's what it kind of reminded me of when I was watching. Like, this has, like, a little bit of, like, that, that kind of, like, feel. Like, a bit of heavy metal to it. Okay. I didn't pick up on that, but, uh, yeah, looking back, like, thinking about it, yeah, I, I kind of, I can see why you would say that. Yeah. Especially near the end when they're, like, in the layer pit of, like, you know, yeah. the robots. And there's, like, robot, like, imp things dancing around for some fucking reason. <laughs> yeah, they're, like, little lesser... Yeah. Yeah, okay. It was just a really fun, wild thing. Yeah. And it... then, like, you know, Don approaches and all the robots just leave. <laughs> oh, like, Night on Bald Mountain, in yeah. a sense. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 that too. Okay, yeah, like, it, it's, like <laughs> it's a full moon and it's the only time the robots can come out and play. And it's... Yeah. Okay, it was it was fun. I like that's one of the shorts I liked the most. Yeah, it it it, uh, it was up there. It was I think it would be above Cloud for me. I think the the opening and the ending I would treat them as one, mm -hmm. and then Starlight Angel I really liked. Yeah, and then probably like Red uh, Chicken Man and the Redneck, or Chicken Man and Redneck. And yeah, then, um, I think Deprived is kind of tied. Okay. With um, Chicken Man and Redneck because like they're both really good and I like them for different reasons, but I can't put one over the other. Okay. In a sense, and then uh, Presence I didn't really care for, and then <laughs> Westerners. Yeah, fair enough. Oh, that, yeah, Cloud and yeah, <laughs> uh, and yeah. So that was the last short for me, and at some point, it probably happened for you. 
Yeah. The last one for me was Chicken Man and the Redneck. Oh, perfect. And then, yeah, we got the, the end credits, uh, or the ending bit, mm-hmm. which what I have written here. So, uh, the, it ends with, uh, book to ends with the title, uh, Robot Carnival, coming to, like, uh, a little dune sandhill that's having trouble going up. Yeah. And eventually kind of, it, if I recall correctly, it gets up there, but then, like, tips over and falls and just breaks apart and everything, trying to, like, do this. And then, like... It covers in sand, and like someone comes by and digs up a little piece of it. I out think from it's supposed to show like the passage of time, like yeah. the, the carnival's finally come to an end. And he brings it home, and he's showing his kids this, you know, nice little toy, and like a little ballerina kind of pops out. I'm thinking, like, huh, that's cute. Don't think something's explode. And sure enough, <laughs> yeah, I was like, ah, uh, that's not going to end well. And then the ballerina goes, okay, and just <laughs> the whole house just erupts. Everyone's dead, and then it just says the end. And on where the house was, I'm like, that is fucking yeah. funny. <laughs> and they're like, oh, wow, is a little ballerina <laughs> gone. <laughs> and that was and then, Robot Carnival. Yeah, the, t- the, the credits just use, have, if I recall correctly, just like, you know, you're remembering the good times of the carnival kind of thing. Yeah. And yeah, it was overall a very uh, pretty good movie overall, I'd say. Yeah, I'd give it a, like a solid six and a half, seven. It does have yeah. peaks and valleys. It's it's one of those things where it's like it's hard to recommend to anyone. This is something where it's like if you enjoy animation, I would uh, highly recommend seeing this because it is a treat. A hundred percent. But like I would say, you know, watch these two or these three, and if you like the rest, you know, like mm-hmm. those ones, you could probably watch the rest. But yeah. I don't think it'd be like, oh, you got to watch Cloud. Yeah. No. <laughs> like, you you, you got to watch like Presence or whatever. Yeah. Because it's they're only about like. <laughs> six to twelve minutes a piece. They're very, yeah. they're for the most part they're pretty short. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, nothing really stands out as landmark part of like this particular aspect of this. Yeah, anthology. it's not something where it's like you have to see this. Yeah. Uh, this this thing, and it's like. But if you're a fan of like anthology movies or Japanese animation from like the eighties, where it was all like I think anime. Crazy, if you if you love animation in general, this is probably something you would really like. Yeah, definitely give it a watch. Yeah. All right, let's. <laughs> we, we've talked about this a lot but I, we still have like some behind the scenes information 42 minutes I know <laughs> um so yeah as I said this uh this movie uh became more prominent after it came out in its limited release uh, especially when it aired on TV uh more uh specifically it aired on the sci-fi channel really yeah back in the early 90s and then Cartoon Network in 1995 during what was called Night of the Vampire Robots. Night of the Vampire Robots. A movie marathon alongside Vampire Hunter D and uh-huh. Twilight of the Cockroaches. Twilight of the Cockroaches. Was that an anime? Or? Yes. Ah, okay. It's a very weird one, too. Ah. Uh, which ran from midnight to six in the morning. God damn. Who's... Three things back to back. Wow. It's quite a... <laughs> Uh, okay, so this is the uh, one of the big things I wanted to mention. So, I had told you told you what I had heard that this movie was done by you know nine uh, well known celebrated directors in the anime industry. Yes, I was wrong, and so were everyone else who said this. Oh, you found more information. That's I found correct information. Oh, that's not on the back of the box. No. Ooh. Uh, these people had never directed anything prior to this. Really? All the animators had done things like key animation or like minor animating so this uh, is things. The, this is their This came out view. before Akira. By like a year. Ah. Okay. So this is... This is one of those ones where it makes you sound like this is something after like they became famous. This is instead the stepping stone into... Yes. And what I think... I did not know that. Because I was looking at everyone's credits that uh, were directing this movie, Robot Carnival, and a lot of them ended up working on Akira. I can definitely see that. Cause... So, like, I, I feel like, you know, because the, uh, one, the, one of the more well-known names on this is the person who did do the manga uh, of Akira. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then would later direct the uh, movie anime, uh, which came out, once again, a year later. Um, and they probably were just, like, they got together and like, why don't we just do this kind yeah. of thing. Probably maybe to raise funds for Akira. Who knows? Because hey, I mean, like that—that that was a pretty 
significant product at the time. Definitely a big challenge. But also, apparently I read somewhere that Akira and Tetsuo show up at the carnival or... Really? They, they show up as minor characters. I didn't see them. I wasn't even... I didn't know that. I wasn't even looking out. It was probably one of those, like, you gotta pause frame by frame and Maybe, see in the yeah. corner. But there's so much stuff happening on the time. It's a lot. <laughs> yeah, apparently they, they, they make an appearance. So... Uh, I went on to INDB and uh, mm-hmm. scoured through everyone's uh, what they did uh, before this movie came out, which was uh, in 87, yep. to see what was done. So, uh, of course, you got the creator of Akira, mm-hmm. uh, who did the manga uh, in 82. And then, yeah, the movie came out in 88. Uh, we had an animator on, a couple of animators, actually, on Space Cobra series, which is 82 to 83. And same with the movie. Animators on uh, Matt Cross, which is a robot show. I remember Matt Cross, yep. From 84, and director for Black Magic M66, which came out uh, roughly around the same time. It is something? It's short, too, so maybe we might watch it. <laughs> okay. Um, we had animators from Mobile Suit Gundam, uh, mm-hmm. from, you know, 85 to 86. Uh, though also, a lot of them would also go on to do Bubblegum Crisis. I, I'm familiar with Bubblegum Crisis. Which is another anime. very famous uh, anime with robots and, you know, okay. shit. I'm, I'm sensing a trend. Yes. We had key animators on Fist of the North Star. Big surprise. <laughs> no surprise. No surprise there at all. Uh, there was also an animator from Nausicaa that worked on this. Really? Yeah. Okay. Which came out in 84. One of my favorite uh, films that's technically Ghibli, but not. <laughs> hmm. Uh... Many of, like I said, many of them would work on a cure in some shape, way, or form. Yep. And Robot Carnival, for a lot of them, is their first directing credit. And for a lot of them, their only directing credit. Interesting. <laughs> I, I remember reading somewhere, I think, I think, judging by the animation style, um, it might have been Starlight Angel, but one of the directors that did that worked on Kite... And uh, Mezzo Forte. Okay. I'm not sure if you're familiar with those. I know Kite. Uh, Mezzo Forte, not so much. K- Kite came out in 97, I think. Okay, so same year. Roughly. And it was pretty violent, pretty graphic. Yes. I remember seeing clips of it on YouTube and also on, like, uh, not Cartoon Network, but something like... YTV or something, something like that. Really, back then. but it was it was a heavily censored version because there's a lot of gore and. <laughs> Maybe we'll have to look for kite. I mean, I want to, that's one of the ones I do definitely want to see. There's also so Mezzo Forte takes place in like the same universe, and the main character from Kite makes an appearance in Mezzo Forte for like a split second. <laughs> um, and I remember seeing a bit of Mezzo Forte again, like a heavily censored because yeah. it was very violent and whatnot. But it wasn't until years later, when I was probably early twenties, realized that. It was a graphic porn at some point. There, <laughs> there was a U.S. release and an original Japanese release where about 20 to some odd minutes, and it was just graphic. It, it basically <laughs> categorized it as a hentai, and I was completely surprised because I was like, I, I, it was one of those things that kept me up at night where you're like, I remember distinctly seeing something when I was a kid, and I couldn't remember <laughs> what it was. And I had to go online, I'm like, I vaguely type in what I was thinking about into the internet, and be like, oh, fuck, what was that thing? Orange suit. And I found it. I started watching it. I remember, I saw, like, you go Google image, I'm like, yeah, that's what I'm looking for. And I'm like, I don't remember there being dicks in the anime. <laughs> I don't remember there being ejaculation. <laughs> What's happening? So I did a bit of deep diving and went, oh my god, that's... I was like, <laughs> even that they cut it out, the un- the censored bit still made it to TV. Because even if you cut out, like, the stu- that graphic stuff, the fact that they put it on television, even, like, in some form... That's like insane. Saying, like, oh, we're, we're doing a heavily censored deep throat <laughs> rendition on TV. You're like, well, it's still... A- porn so why would you put it so the fact that i saw it on tv at some point it must have been on tv is... that's insane yeah i <laughs> I love it <laughs> but same thing with kite both kite and mezzo forte it's like sister series or whatever have very very graphic unedited or uncensored um unsimulated like animated sex scenes oh interesting and i had no idea and that was like that's my little tidbit <laughs> <laughs> So when I was reading that, I was going through it, I was watching it, and I was also, like, looking at the side thing. I'm like, there's no boobies in this, is there? 
<laughs> it wasn't. There wasn't. It was just straight up robots and people and explosions and shit. <laughs> that that's a, seems to be a weird trend. Like, so there's a an anime. I think it's a movie mm-hmm. um, called Wicked City, and it had the same thing where there was remember, a heavily yeah. censored version of it. And it's just like, how the fuck? <laughs> because I remember I have seen Wicked City, and I'm pretty sure I've seen the uncensored edition. And other than like mild sex scenes there's like a couple like boobs and maybe a bush or something there's nothing like too graphic but nothing you would show yeah. on tv you'd have it's, to it's weird because i remember there were like two agents and there was a girl that like mm-hmm. sucked in like an old man like uh, metamorphosis it's kinda. weird yeah it's very <laughs> it's out there it's very out there i don't remember it being very good but it's something no. worth talking about yeah <laughs> uh yeah perhaps we'll hunt those down because i do want to expose you to more anime <laughs> terrible anime from the 90s the, the plus side of me being able to choose one movie <laughs> <laughs> and you having just to agree with it like, oh, damn this is my homework <laughs> so uh yeah uh not not a hard recommend but an interesting recommend yeah yeah if you're a fan of anthology films and it, it's on the back of it it says it's a futuristic fantasia of visionary animation yeah, that's about say, that's the best way to put it yeah I would I'd recommend it for anime fans, fans of like traditional anime. Um, go for it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hey there. Do you need awkward silences to fill awkward moments? Come on down to Johnson's Awkward Silence Store, where you can get short seconds, medium long seconds, and minutes of silence to fill those awkward moments. Starting at fourteen ninety nine. That's all I had. <laughs> Just something stupid to sell. Thank you for sponsoring this episode of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> all right, our our second and last movie of this very lengthy episode, but you know, no one's complained. No one actually said anything positive about this yet, but <laughs> no one's listening to this. It's just for us. Probably that's about right. <laughs> Uh, the other movie is one that you recommend, or brought to the table, I should should say. Yes. Uh, Lake Michigan Monster. I fucking adore this movie. It was very funny. I, my history with it was, I remember seeing it on Blu-ray from Arrow, and I I thought, I saw the cover, and I went, oh, that looks interesting, and I watched the trailer, and I'm like, oh, that looks like it's kind of fun, I don't know if I would ever, like, enjoy it or watch it, but at 77 minutes, it's very short. Yeah. And it's, uh, I, I thought, you know what, maybe, why not? Uh, I have the Arrow Player um, streaming service, and it was up there. And I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna check it out. It was about one o'clock in the morning, and <laughs> I was I, I was sitting there with a beer, and I'm like, I'm gonna watch Lake Michigan Monster because I've been I've been interested in seeing it. So I put it on, and I'm like, okay, it's it's very campy. It starts very silly, and then I got to a joke first thing, in, which was, oh, the monster is, it this is it's bigger than a lion. It's <laughs> bigger than a tiger it's the size of a lion and I, I started i started chuckling to myself and I, I was just like i'm gonna love this so i kept watching and i was expecting it to like peter off and that would be the only joke and i kept going and i quote it all the time occasionally like my coworker will be like won't notice me come in and she'll be like oh where'd you come from and i go phoenix <laughs> and there's there's so many good moments in the movie but the the one thing that really sold me is i wanted to i thought it would be great for like chris and laura and like at, at, like sitting down and watching it for a movie night was the bit where he's like go star me <laughs> and he gets them all into the boat and then it's like the long shot and they just come in on the side and there's a tower of ghosts <laughs> on the boat i was fucking laughing I at that laughed so hard i almost threw up it was one in the morning and i was wheezing and all of a sudden he goes and stops and it slowly falls over and he goes go get them boys i had tears and i was almost th- I-, I almost threw up i laughed so goddamn hard oh my god I- yeah <laughs> and it was just it was so so damn funny but also i posted a picture of it to my instagram the blu-ray because i really liked the movie i had to buy it no like this is the so like i watched this it's on amazon prime as well which uh was great because that's how i watched it i'm like i gotta buy this now it's, i want this just on my shelf it's so great i want to be able to like hey laura chris borrow i'm borrowing this for you guys i want you to watch they this they have to watch <laughs> it um because I, I i took a picture of it and i wrote like michigan monster what an absolute trip 
And Ryland Twos, yes, the, I saw that. The writer, director, and and the main star who plays Captain Seafield wrote, "Thank you, Dylan. You truly are a first-rate first mate." And I said, "I enjoyed it immensely. I hope to see more from you and the crew in the future." And he went, "Stay tuned for a 19th century Northwoods supernatural epic, Hundreds of Beavers." And immediately that title, I'm I'm sold. Hundreds of Beavers. I want that to be a real thing. I don't know if it it's, is a real thing. It's uh, I looked doing? at his IMDb page. It's a hundred percent yes. real thing. <laughs> yes. That's what I want. <laughs> and uh, I'm super excited. So, Ryland, if you're if you're listening, I don't know if you would be, but <laughs> hundreds of beavers, I can't wait. Yes, I, I want to just imagine also him just listening to me like, or I'm going to listen to the first 50 minutes of them talking about some fucking anime thing before they get to my thing. <laughs> He's not directing it this time. It's Mike Cheslick, um, who... Oh, no, it's co-directed by him and Mike Cheslick. Okay. Uh, but it's slated for this year... Oh, um, interesting. And it's got, uh, he's in it again, and a whole bunch of other um, different actors. Uh, Daniel Long, who played, um, I'm pretty sure he played Dick. Okay. Um, Sailorman Dick, Fl- Dick Flynn yeah. is the sailor in the first film, and then maybe Sean Shaughnessy? <laughs> I, I, again, the names like, are so silly too I don't... Edge, Pepsi, Sean Shaughnessy and Dick Flynn it goes ah that's why they call him Dick because he has a penis <laughs> <laughs> and I occasionally like I'll drop something at work or I'll, st- I'll do something stupid and I'll go damn it Sean Shaughnessy and it's just <laughs> It's such a quotable, it's wacky, it, I love it. So, like, I, I mentioned to this before we started writing, but, like, yeah. we, we make little notes just so it's easier to, you know, mm-hmm. say what we're saying. But, like, I stopped writing notes because it, it was at a point where I was just, I'm writing, like, literally every joke. Yeah. So, like, I was about five minutes in, I'm like, I gotta stop writing because I'm not gonna, you know, be putting anything interesting down other than quotable bits from this. <clears throat> it's it's basically, you might, is, I might as well just write down the entire script. Yeah, because it's like, you know... Every moment there is like something humorously interesting happening in this. It's it's constant. It is what I assume. It, it's it reminds me of like uh, Roger Corman movies and whatnot, but just turned up to eleven. Yeah, there's even when there's slow moments in the film where it's trying to be like um, reflective and and self like um, it, like uh, like reflective basically. There's still jokes happening. There's yeah. a lot of visual gags. There's no like slow moment, like a like a yeah. It just it moment. keeps going. Yeah, it it is constantly. They're like we got to pump a joke out every like forty five seconds to a minute yeah. or something like that, and it it works very well in its favor because it's it's you have to pause it to go back because you've missed a bit of dialogue because you're still laughing at something yeah. stupid. <laughs> um, but. Apparently they wanted to just make a movie, and because uh, the the writer director Rylan Two Bricks and Cole Twos, um, his family is in a lot of the film. Oh, okay. Uh, his mother plays Martha, his wife. He goes, "That's why my wife is so old." That's, that's his mother. Um, his brother is his brother in the film. Um, Seafeed's brother is the the guy with the eye patch. He yeah. goes, "I'm painting scenery." He looks at the water and he goes, "I can see it." <laughs> I love that joke. That was great. And um, uh, the girl that kicks the softball or the, the beach ball, that's apparently a cousin or sibling. Uh, I think she's credited as girly. Um, the the song at the end of the, the film where it's like, oh, Captain Seafield. Uh, the, it's the Brixen, it's the, the, the twos players or something like that. There's a few yeah. members of his family. It's a very expansive family, I guess, but they're yeah. all pitched in in some degree uh, it's... in the film. It, it's definitely a movie where, like, I was watching it was just, like, I, I wanted to make something after watching because it it's, like, it's definitely one of those <laughs> things where it's, like, oh, man, I'm just, I'm lit with wanting to do stuff because it just, it just ignites your creativeness. Absolutely. That's one of the Or reasons. to do something creative. One of, the, one of my favorite things that I could say about this movie, like, the best praise I can give it is it reminded me of why I wanted to make movies. Exactly. Because it, like, n- uh, narratively, it's not the best. It's not going to win any, like oscars or anything like that but it's just unfiltered fun yeah that's the entire that's a, and it's <laughs> specifically it reminded me of why i started making movies and why I wanted why to we yeah films. you know doing all this stuff yeah it's it's just unfiltered unhinged like we're not fun. trying to make 
movies it, that are going to get shot into space to prove yeah. the human race it, as a dominant species. We're just having fun. I think even us. going further, it was one of those things where it's like, it kind of reminded me of like, you know, when we were doing like the, the 50 hour film festival, it's just the amount of fun we had doing those. It was just basically like, we were sitting down, we we're like writing like, okay, what are we going to do next? And what, how are we going to top up this previous, like yeah. uh, one up this previous scene? And it felt like that. They were just constantly going with mm-hmm. jokes and whatnot. And I would love to do it like a 70 minute version of one of our, Fifty hour film <laughs> festivals, but just make it fucking insane. And yeah, that's that's basically that that feeling. It, it's I, I don't want to kind of divulge too much off of this, but it was, it was weird too because like I'd watch this and then I kind of followed up with like another very indie film uh, called uh, like Clay World or whatever off the table, which kind of did the same thing where it's just like you know this very like you know uh, people just having fun making something very uh, off the cuff. It's not gonna you know, revolutionize anything, but they were just having fun doing was, something they enjoyed doing. It's just like... Yeah, it was like looking at your roommate and going, you want to make a movie? Exactly. And it was just one of those, yeah, why not? We'll have fun do it. It's something that one of those... One like, of those... At one point in one life, a lot of kids when they're younger will like, you want to be a rock star or a musician or something. You're like, you guys want to make a movie? And everyone's like, yeah, let's do it. Let's have fun make a movie. These guys actually did it. <laughs> yeah. They're like, they're they're in their 30s, like, delivering pizzas, and they're like, yeah, you guys want to make a movie? And all, everyone was like, I don't act, but okay, why not? It'll be fun. And this is the product of that. It's Yeah, it's like, when, it's like I'm so excited for, like, when, you know, uh, this pandemic kind of, like, uh, is a little less uh, aggressive, that yeah. we can, like, go back to doing shit like that. Yeah. <laughs> because, like, that's, I'm looking forward to, like, some of the stuff that like, we've been talking about and we're planning. And this just kind of, like, makes me, like, even more excited to, uh, you know, do that. Get the creative juices flowing. It's, yeah. it's perfect for that. Uh, I guess we should just roughly go through the plot of the film. <laughs> which is, uh, which is a Herculean task in and of itself. Yeah. Um, um the be- long... Go ahead. Oh, uh, uh basically, um, Captain Seafield has, uh got he's grouped together a uh four people sorry three people and himself um to the the weird task of hunting the lake michigan monster yeah that had killed his father it it murdered his father and it made his mom like crazy or something and there's the 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 fighter um dick flynn uh the weapons expert sean shaughnessy and the the radar technician nedge pepsi and they're all played very well. Um, they're caricatures, archetypes of like the classic, like the the pulp action yeah. heroes and whatnot. And uh, they they're going on like, oh, it was it was it killed my father six fathoms off of the um, off the shore, off the shore. which shore. is like barely anything. <laughs> six like um. A f- no, he's like it was one fathom off the shore. Sorry, and and anybody who doesn't know, a fathom is six feet. Yeah, That's, so it, it's literally like what maybe waist deep water that they're standing in at best. Yeah, <laughs> so they're like you you can't find the monster. So basically, he hunts the monster, and they find out that he's not like a sea captain. He's just a weenie, mm-hmm. and but the monster was real, and one of the characters, uh, Dick Flynn, gets impregnated by, like, a sea egg, because he, he's the one in the... They're like, oh, we're going to put you out in a boat, and he's, like, like from me... That bit was so funny, where it's, like, ten paces, and he does it, and he's, like, a pace short, so he, like, hops the last pace oh, and gets yeah. out of the boat. <laughs> and he's out there in, like, a little dinghy, and he's got a giant sword... <laughs> and he's like swinging it around trying to like catch the monster and whatnot yeah it's and that's basically the movie it's it's got the, the three act like the the team comes apart because they realize that he's a wiener and then they get back together to to help him out and whatnot and he visits old friends and it yeah it, it's surprisingly like it follows like you know a, a typical structure fairly well for something that uh, is so off the wall so off the wall and feels very like improvise even though it definitely has a script yeah like it feels like they were on set and it's like well let's shoot a scene here <laughs> kind yeah. of thing They're like oh this lo- this looks like a great place to to shoot a scene i i had to laugh when like he's playing uh checkers with like one of the ghosts and i was just thinking of like uh that that one french film uh the, the seal or whatever Oh, um, that's the Swedish, um, yeah, Swedish. The Seventh Seal. The Seventh Seal. Or when he's playing uh, chess, I'm thinking something similar like that, where oh, it's yeah. like trying to be like very grandiose about it. It's like, it's just fucking checkers. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're, it's like a deep, 
deep metaphorical statement and there's like they're just playing checkers that's it um but yeah it's it's so funny it's it's constant with the jokes yeah oh absolutely (laughs) just every every bit where it's just like what you didn't realize this was a museum the entire time it's like no (laughs) no yeah they're walking through and they're like we thought this was your house and like he's got an entire like anthropology department like fish in the walls and and he goes, these checks aren't going to go out. Are, like, are you, these checks legitimate? Eh. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, they're like, ah, geez, where'd you come from? Phoenix. And I'm like, how'd you get here? Oh, trap doors, Nedge. They're all over my house. <laughs> and he's, he's like living in the walls and the floors of this department. <laughs> and they're setting up all these different operations that are failing constantly. And it's. One of the other really big things I liked is, like, the editing for it is just, it's very uh, fun in that sense, too. Yeah. Where it's it doesn't take itself too seriously. It feels very, like, they try to emulate, uh, like, an older movie, but, like, kind of, like, like the fake parody the emulating pulp, it. Um, like Roger Corman. Yeah, so, like, you'll, you'll see, like, artificial scratching that they kind of did digitally. Yep. And, like, a lot of times, there's, like, a moment where, like, it looks like the film kind of runs out before it comes back as, like, a way to sequence to the next, like, scene. Yeah, yeah, like, the, the reels. Yeah. Instead of, like, the Like, so a little burn. stupid shit like that. It's like, I love that. That was so great. <laughs> yeah, there, there's so much to absolutely to to adore about, like, Michigan Monster. I love it so much. It's so, it's so silly. It reminded me, kind of, of, like, those Nostalgia Critic films that they did. Yes. Only... With not, the groups. Uh, yeah, yeah, not terrible. Not questionable yeah. in, like, every regard. <laughs> yeah, you're like, oh, okay, I'm, I'm hoping that there's no sexual predators in this one. I doubt it. But, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it reminded me, like, clearly those guys were just, like, having fun, but at the same time, the people that the that guy with the glasses... They were there was a lot of, going on behind the scenes. Yeah. Where the, you, like, this, it does legitimately just feel like a bunch of friends got together... And made something, even just, though they probably had no, like, uh, resources or, you know, whatever well, to another, do it. One of the interesting aspects was because the production was so minute and tiny that all the characters, they weren't unionized and whatnot. They they were able to do, um, Balua? I, Peters, I think that that's her name. I can't pronounce her name. I, I thought it was Balula, Balula but it's, it's Bayula? I okay. think I can't remember. I'm I'm butchering it. I'm sorry, um, <laughs> but like she would have to like you know be behind the camera when she wasn't on screen, and same with like um, basically the way that we shoot everything. <laughs> yeah, if you're, if you're not on scene, you're holding a boom mic or you're holding the camera yeah. or you're doing lighting, and <laughs> it was basically those four were always doing like so they would set up something. They were always doing a different aspect of it. So it was you all hear that? On deck. Unions are fucking stupid. No. Yeah. I mean, unions have their place, but like, as, when it comes to like small independent films, like, uh, I mean, it, it, they can it, screw it, off for the most part because it, it doesn't help. I, I find unions to it keeps the people that should have lost their job employed. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it gives employment to you know in certain regards for like something bigger, but like for independent stuff, uh, not yeah. necessarily needed. We, we wouldn't unionize. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> everyone's replaceable <laughs> but yeah just overall i love this it was great it and was easily i watched 271 movies last year and that was probably one of your that highlights was easily in my top 10 favorite oh 100 i would believe that it was it's i got the blu-ray <laughs> i had to put it on my shelf it, it's it's so much fun it, <laughs> it it's the pulp the the sixties and fifties, those sci fi black and white, there's a giant monster out there. Yeah. It's peak clearly inspired by that. Um and it's just it's so much fun. I don't even know how to like keep going. You guys a hundred percent. It's a big recommendation. Yeah, oh god, yeah. You like you have to see it. and it's like uh like you said, like it's everywhere. You can see it on Arrow's player, you yep. can, it's on uh, Amazon Prime, yep. and it's very easy to get on Blu-ray. Yep, it's available through um Arrow Video. 
Yeah. Um, they did a special boutique Blu-ray. That's the only way you can get it. It's a little bit more expensive. It's about $40, which isn't too bad. But, I mean, like, it supports the creator. So yeah. To make, you know, a thousand beavers. Yep. <laughs> and it's it's chock full of special features uh, behind the scenes. There's another short film that they worked on. It was like a pilot. It was called something like Hot Lips or something like that. <laughs> And it was like a short little pilot for like a TV series. I think it was just something that they weren't aiming for a TV series. They were just making something for fun. And this was like a stepping stone to Lake Michigan Monster. <laughs> and it's spectacular. It's so much fun. I Absolutely love it. see it. Uh, yeah, 100%. Hunt it down and watch it. <laughs> so uh, that that that's uh, the episode, I suppose. Yeah, it's it's a considerably lengthier one. We talked about for about an hour about the first one, and then just only a because there's so much, right? <laughs> yeah, there. I mean, technically, we talked about like nine movies with the first one. Yeah, <laughs> we did a lot of work today. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, thank you for listening. Uh, don't forget to uh, like, comment, uh, share all it with that. people. All that uh, dumb shit that you're asked to do. All that garbage. <laughs> um. And uh, I have to always say this, but I know it's never going to be a true thing. Uh, if you are listening to this on some sort of proper podcasting uh, have you put venue, the- God, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, How can they do that, Joe? <laughs> I mean, I'm future-proofing this, right? <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, you could always see this episode a lot earlier <laughs> <laughs> by going to our YouTube channel, uh, True Philosopher Films. Um, or probably it might only end up being the only place you ever fucking see it. I know we'll we'll I see you. how lazy I feel. <laughs> uh, and, and until next time, um, keep watching movies. I don't keep know. Watch, never stop. <laughs> never yeah. stop watching movies. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Is now a good time to say we hate movies? This is all an act. <laughs> Fuck movies. Oh, it's still recording. Jeez. Oh, God, no. Fuck. Oh, jeez. <laughs>